everybody. Welcome back. This is JJ. Um, so this is our third, third day, third day. Um, it's Monday. JJ arrived last week. Good boy, buddy. And we are going to repeat and go to the round pen. Hi, handsome. He, uh, JJ is here for retraining. And JJ is a, um, you rarely see a horse like this. He is definitely catatonic. And so um, my late horse, Smokey, was the worst catatonic horse I'd ever worked with. And so what happens with catatonic? It's much more extreme and severe. Um, than just freezing and going deep within and checking out. So when you study catatonic, especially with trauma, hi, sweetheart, the the issue with catatonic that makes it so dangerous because the horse shuts down so deeply, they go into such a extreme self-preservation mode that when they come out of that catatonic state, they always explode. And that's why he was getting hurt. Uh, or not he was getting hurt, but his owner was getting bucked off. Um, you know, he was bucking and, and you know, dropping a shoulder or spinning around. So as you can see, JJ is a sweet horse, and on a surface level, uh, you know, he's really quiet and calm, but he's quiet and calm when you know what to look for, which is what we're trying to train all of you with training your eye, and obviously his owner, his calmness is really his way of checking out. And the more you push him out of his comfort and that checking out and freezing is his comfort, the more you push him to stay engaged, to stay connected, to respond to your cues, the more you push him, the more he checks out more and more, right? He goes more and more catatonic. And then all of a sudden he wakes up. It's just like that one extra push or something else overstimulates him that he wasn't prepared for and surprises him. And it's usually those two things, either we're pushing them past or something else is added to the mix that just overstimulates him and they flip out. Okay, so a lot of horses can freeze, but catatonic is when it just gets to the worst. It just, you can't get any worse than that. And that's really scary and it's really important to identify the catatonic states. And that's what we're hopefully gonna be able to show you guys. Basically, if you have a horse that's been quiet and all of a sudden you're doing the things that you've always done or somebody's taught you to do with this horse and the horse explodes, that's because the horse has either had too much, they're angry, frustrated, confused. Um, but in being a catatonic horse, that's because they were being pushed, 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 pushed past that part of um, their choice of self-preservation, if that makes sense. Because there's a lot of reactive horses out there that will buck you off and, you know, as we know, overreact because they choose the fight and flight. But what I'm trying to clear up is when you have a horse that chooses the freeze mode for self-preservation, if you keep pushing and pushing and pushing, they will get more and more dull and dead and quiet and stuck that's because they're going more and more into that catatonic. And, that me and we keep kicking, kicking, kicking to get more of a reaction out of them, for an example, and that's when they explode. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. You gotta be careful. If you can catch that, if you can identify it, um, you know, this can be prevented. And then of course, the work that JJ's doing here with me is the same thing that I'm teaching his owner. She's involved in the Mastery Membership Program, um, but she doesn't, no one knows how to use the program to this level yet. The program provides all the exercises and information to help you help a horse like this 
but it takes time to understand how to use the program and it takes time to develop your skills. Um, so this is where my experience comes in. So the good thing is for his owner and JJ is he's going to be going through the same exercises that his owner is learning in my program. The difference is, is my level of skill and experience and feel and timing that I bring um, that's going to really help him. Plus, I'm a, I'm a trauma specialist, so there's a, there's a lot that I know that I'm not going to provide in any online course because it, you can't just learn it, it like that. It, it takes so much more time. Um, all right, so JJ's got some creosote. Looks like he's been rubbing up against the fence um, and scratching your face, and we'll give him a good um, bath after. No sense, he's already been fly sprayed. Um, a couple of things with, with JJ is, you know, we were doing a lot of this the other day, um, the last few days, and just look at the, you know, he's breathing heavy again, so we get the hyperventilating. And his owner was telling me they came for a review on Friday, um, and, you know, he, he hyperventilates so much that he starts to get a raspy noise or a, um, like, fluid. And I recognized that because he didn't have any discharge, uh, it was not an upper respiratory or shipping sickness, which horses get so easily when they travel and they're stressed. The other would be a partially paralyzed trachea. And sure enough, my vet, who's also one of my vets, who's also a chiropractor, was here to work on JJ on Friday too. She said the same thing. So we might hear that noise, but it sounds real phlegmy, like a lot of fluid. He gets really worked up over things he should not get worked up. So this is good though. So he's stepping into my space, which is excellent. So Friday, just doing stuff like this, he was running backwards, pulling away from me. And now today, he's had the weekend off, except with me, you know, handling him and feeding him and saying hello to him. He's had the weekend off. So now he's stepping into my space, which is a positive. It tells me that he feels safe and secure with me. This is great. So I'm going to do a lot of reassuring. But all of this just really bothers JJ. And it's sad because when you start a horse, even when you start a young horse, you got to be able to do all of this. You got to bomb proof them, right guys? You got to be able to pat them, touch them, make loud noises, lay all over them, be all in their blind spot like I am. And for him to, to be okay with that, and just know that if you have a, a really healthy young horse that hasn't had any negative experiences with training or handling, and you have a great relationship with them, none of this is going to bother them. This is not normal. This is not normal. So he's a very head shy horse. He's a very uh, skeptical horse, suspicious horse, really tight. But all of this is would tell me immediately, you know, my gosh, this horse has issues with being ridden. He's probably a bucker. I just know that. Anytime you do stuff like this, good job, Jay. Good job licking and relaxing. Anytime you pat a horse all over, they get tight and move away, jump away from you. Mm -mm, I wouldn't be riding that. Bottom line, see, he's stepping on his rope. I'm doing all this on purpose. So the biggest thing for Jay is he can't stand not seeing what's going on. And he won't look to see what's going on. And so as I always say, a horse, when a horse really trusts you and accepts you and respects you, all three, they're gonna give you both eyes and both ears. When they trust, accept you and respect you. And JJ tries so hard. You see the pretty ears and the pretty eyes on me. I'm trying, I'm right here, Caroline, I'm right here. And then he gets overfaced, he gets scared. And as soon as you get in his blind spot, which is all here or under his belly, or he steps on the rope, he is so unsure. And instead of him looking, he just goes into self-preservation mode, which is, I'm out of here. I'm gonna, you know, bolt out of here. And so when a horse, if he trusted me, he would take the time to look at what's going on. So we're working on that. This is huge. This is huge. We did a lot of this type of rope activity last week because it's in his blind spot. It's just in his blind spot and it's just something that makes him uncomfortable. Jay, Jay is so tight mentally and physically. That's why we had the chiropractor out. Good boy. 
Um, he's pretty good though physically. She said he didn't really have any issues, but he's so tight mentally, anything that's out of his norm or his comfort, he wants to freeze, right? And then if you keep pushing him, he's gonna explode. So I just want him to get comfortable with this, good. And I'm also teaching him how to lower his head and release endorphin and just relax into this and trust me. Check in, trust me. So what I wanna do is my left hand here under his chin is gonna point his nose the opposite direction, right? So he can't really see me unless he looks at me. Good boy. And then my right hand's gonna pull the rope so I can create a bend, but he's gotta wait. Oh, he doesn't like to bend. He has no flexion, no suppling. Good, so he's panicking, so just pull him around. And there he goes panicking. <laughs> and breathing heavy. Good boy. So yep, we're gonna do all this rope stuff. Good boy. He's gotta get over that. So there's a lot of things going on with this one technique here. This technique has to do so much. Yep, he's smart. He's smart. He gets the pattern. You can run backwards all you want. He gets the pattern he, and he starts to anticipate what you want. He doesn't wait for you. So this is a horse that's been so abused, honestly, so manhandled. And I don't mean abused, beat, he might've been probably, but I mean, he's been so manhandled. I've worked with so many of these ranch horses in my career and they always get used up and retired between the ages of five and eight. It's pretty young. So a bunch of older ladies end up buying them because they've been there and done that, right? These horses supposedly, they've been all over the place and all my older clients want to do is recreationally ride. Maybe do some cowboy dressage, western dressage, a little bit of dressage. But most of the time they just want to casually ride, trail ride. They think, oh yeah, I'm going to buy this beautiful horse that's been out on the range, he can work cattle, he's traveled hundreds of miles or whatever, you know, had a person on his back all day. Every one of them is a mess like this, every one of them. I don't know what those cowboys do, except cowboy him up. All right, so can you trust me? Look how worried his eyeball is. Can you trust me? I'm gonna ask you to bend, so very vulnerable position. Yeah, good boy, and just hold. Good boy, nope, don't back up. Come here. We're not going through that again. Just relax. I'm going real slow, you guys. Just relax, boo. Good boy. <sighs> Trust my hand. This is all part of suppling. It's a part of a lot of things. Working in his blind spot. Good boy. We're doing so much better. Just wait and see if you can't walk, turn around at a nice, easy walk. Good boy. So a lot of what a horse like JJ needs is a ton of repetition and consistency, tons of positive reinforcement. He just needs time for these kinds of experiences to um, become positive. It's not about desensitizing. Remember that, it's not about pressure and release either. It's about how can I make this experience, turn it into a positive and turn him into a confident learner. He's not a confident learner. He's like, oh my God, I better figure this out now or I'm going to get the shit beat out of me or kicked out of me. Good boy. Yeah. Oh, it's a good boy. Nice head down. We're getting that really nice vertical. That's a good, that's trust right there. We're making lots of good progress, boo. That's a good boy. Nope, nope, didn't ask you. Nope, come forward. Nope, yep, I got it behind you and come forward. Good boy. No, I'm not ready yet. I do like that you're not hyperventilating so much. That's excellent. Thank you. And you're gonna get there. You're gonna get there, boo. Good lick and chew. And all right, let's do this one more time and we'll switch sides. Good boy. Yeah, just wait, it's not going down so much. Just wait for that bend. You're okay. It's good that you didn't run from me. Come here, you gotcha. Come here, let's do that again. Get away from the fence. Oh, it's a good boy. Yeah. Constantly keep throwing that rope. He needs that. Every time he sees that rope coming, he gets really worried. He's definitely been roped and flipped. Big time. Mm-mm-mm. These cowboys. And he could have had that done when he was a baby when they went to break him and geld him. Trust me. 
Time is of the essence with those guys. They don't have the time. They don't make the time. Good boy. Can you just follow my feel? Good. Watch your head. There you go. We're getting better. We're getting better. And that's his left side, the side that everyone handles. So that's going to be a lot harder than the other side. Good boy. Nice. Nice. Oh, I know. Oh, we're so tight. We get that U neck. We get all hollow up here because we're always so tight. We got to work on all that. Good. We're doing better. Doing better. And we'll do this a few more times. We're going to work on leading and partner walking to the round pen. See, he figures it out and he says, I'll do it for you instead of waiting for me. I want him to wait for me, you guys. And this, everyone thinks, including his owner, he's so smart. He's such an awesome guy. And he is both of those things. But he does this because he's afraid of getting in trouble. Oh, yeah. Nope, you just wait. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, but just wait. Good boy. Just wait. Wait for me to ask you. Because nobody's home if you keep assuming. You're not present. What do we want with our horse? To be present, to be in that moment with us, to be connected to us. It's part of being safe. I don't want him thinking about what he has to do. Good boy. Yeah, you just wait, love. Here comes that nice little feel to turn to your left. Good. So if he starts walking, I'm going to go with him. Just turn. Good. That was your fine. Whew, you electrocuted me on that one. Relax. Good boy. Good boy. Let's get just a little bend. You're good. This is so much trust. Remember, he can't see me. Good enough. Let's pull. Good boy. It is a huge trust exercise. Plus, we're working on suppling. We're working on your blind spots. Didn't we do this with karma? Oh, yeah. All the young, all, every horse goes through this. Doesn't matter what age. Oh, it's a good boy. Yeah. Pretty soon he'll be like, oh, man, we got to do this exercise again. When he can relax and just quietly turn real slow and calm. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, you're okay. Nope, 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 nope.